Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, before I actually start this video, there are a few things I need to address. First of all, I'm sure you noticed the new intro. Uh, that's probably going to be my permanent intro from here on out, at least for a while, because it's probably been a while, but I'm back doing a toy review for the first time since, she's I don't know how long it's been, since the Lyle Pluridon review from like six months ago. I'm back and I'm finally going to do another toy review. But before I get started on any of that, there are a few things I need to address. First and foremost, uh, I already mentioned the new intro. I'm going to be focusing a lot more on Doctor Who in the future. I just bought the 2-6 Doctor box, box sets on my birthday, so look forward to a lot of 6 Doctor reviews coming up in the future. I also have a lot of new Minecraft stuff planned. Like, I'm building this one thing from the Jurassic World movie in Minecraft right now. I won't say what it is yet, but... It is coming up, so look out for that. Another thing addressing music in my video, I'm gonna be adding a lot more music into my videos now. I almost never did. The only times I really did was for the toy movies like Jurassic Park Snatcher and the Camp Cretaceous Season 3 review, which kind of backfired on me because a lot of people said the music in the Camp Cretaceous Season 3 review was pretty loud and they were right. So I'm probably gonna go Every time I add music into my videos, I'm going to be careful of the volume. And one more thing I need to address. Hang on. I am now recording on this new tripod, and this tripod also comes with a microphone, so my audio quality is going to be sound a lot better now. You won't just have to hear me in my really, really monotone voice saying, Oh, Hammond from the novel was a huge jerk and deserved it. I won't sound, I won't sound, I won't sound weird anymore. So, before to that, and without further ado, let's get into this review because this is gonna be a good one. Okay, guys, so this figure, the figure I'm about to show you is one that I have wanted for years. For such a long time, and I finally got it on my birthday. My dad said he was gonna buy it for me on my birthday, and it took a little, a little while to come, but it finally has arrived, and it is this big guy. This is the 1993 First Wave Kenner Triceratops. I have only had this figure for like a day-ish or so, and already I'm in love with it. I love how it has the real feel skin texture. I love how dense they made the thrill. I love the thrill. I semi-love how if you press the side of this thing, you can make the head jolt up to give it ramming action. I've, I'm in love with this figure. There's so much good things about this figure that I honestly don't know where to start. So let's start off with the positives, the ones I haven't already mentioned. But yeah, the skin on this thing feels excellent. It really reminds me, like, if I had the chance to feel the animatronic that they made for the movie, its skin texture would feel and look a lot like this. Uh, I also love the paint job. I mean, this, minus the stripes, this is the Jurassic Park 1 Triceratops. In fact, I don't think the Triceratops in that movie even had stripes. I know the ones in JP3 did, but this is a different, whole different dinosaur, so I don't know if... I highly doubt, I don't think it did, but I'm gonna have to look that up. But still, it looks cool. And if you look on the this leg right here, this is the stamp, the mark of Jurassic Park that JP, it says... JP number eight, so this is the number eight figure. I also love the hard plasticky texture on the frill. Again, if I ever felt the animatronic being a triceratops, the frill is naturally dense. I also love how they added all these little details, like all these little scratches on the horns. I love that. The eyes, despite being a figure that's nearly 30 years old, the, the paint on the eyes still looks great. 
Normally when I get a figure this old, there's always usually some kind of problems with it in the paint job. For instance, when I had that Dilophosaurus, I forgot what the video was called, but I remember in that video, the Dilophosaurus had a lot of different issues. Like the feet were like really scrunched together. Uh, I think one of the eyes was missing. And I think one of the crests may have been chipped, but I, I don't remember. I'll have to look at that figure and clarify. Yeah, oh, also, the action feature, if you didn't see me earlier, you press, I think, right here. Yeah, right here. Right here behind the front left leg, there's, you can, I think I can kind of feel, there's like a switch or a button that if you press it, it makes the head do like a ramming it motion what the heck is that normal okay so this at the bottom i think yeah if you look inside you can see the mechanism i don't know if that's normal but if someone has had this figure before and yours did that too tell me because i don't know if that's normal or not i don't want to put my finger in there because i don't want to accidentally take the head off I know I kind of sound like a broken record at this point, but I just love the texture of this thing. The skin, this is a real feel figure, and I'm really glad Mattel brought that back for things like the Mosasaur. I think Hasbro, all, not Has, Hasbro, I think Mattel also did this for the Stegosaurus, their first Stegosaurus, not the Lost World one, which I don't know if I'm going to get that figure or not. Because if you've seen pictures of it, the paint job looks nice, the paint job looks good, but the mouth looks a bit... I think, I think that's, it might be a different Stegosaurus figure, but I remember a Stegosaurus figure that looked like the JP one, had a really, really weird mouth. It like stretched from here all the way to its ears, which is weird to me. Now there are, now this figure is not flawless, even though I've made it out to look flawless. This is something that all, <sighs> Mattel, that, why do I keep getting those these mixed up? Kenner lines have the dino damage. Now, I was lucky enough to get one that did have its wound cover. I know there are a lot of these on eBay that do not have the wound cover. And if you try to buy it separately, the wound cover itself will say about like $15. At least that's just what I've seen. I, even when I was little and I was playing with the Hasbro figures for Jurassic World, I did not like this. I, I really don't, but at least these and the Indominus Rex from Hasbro and some of the newer figures now, it's optional, like you can just press a button and it'll go away. It, or as, whereas here you can just take off a piece of the skin. It is a little, the piece on this one at least is a little difficult to get back into place. And it, they didn't always, they used to be all like this. No, it was almost never permanent with Kenner. I don't think any Kenner figures had permanent dino damage. It wasn't until Jurassic Park 3 when I think it was that bull T-Rex. I think you know the one I'm talking about, the one that had that really scrunched up head and like the weird green and dark brown paint scheme. I think it, they, it wasn't until they released that figure that the permanent dino scars became a long time thing and Hasbro I don't know why but they put a lot of emphasis on those scars for instance the Spinosaur if you look at it almost half its side is gone and Leo the Utyrannus actually pointed this out to me in a past video he said that with one of the figures the ribs went long ways or something which just does not sound natural to me like at all so yeah that's a bit weird oh also i guess i we figured out where mattel got their no painted fingernails rule from which i mean that doesn't bother me too much in the beak i don't i don't think i would really expect it to be painted yeah overall guys this figure is awesome. Oh yeah, that's another thing. It's nearly the size of my forearm. If I can just... Yeah, look at this. 
It's almost as big as my forearm, if not a little bigger. That is kind of crazy. So yeah, as the great General Grievous would say, this would make a fine addition to my collection. And I think I'm gonna wrap this video up there, guys. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss any new videos. I hope you guys are looking forward to the future of my channel because I sure am because there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff on my channel this year. And I will see you guys in the next one. So long.